Hey, this is your sister and ally, Moi Fung, coming to you with another episode of Moi Talks, Life Beyond the Surface, conversations intended to empower you to walk in wholeness and true freedom based on the Word of God. Listen in. Hello, everyone. This is your sister and ally, Moi Fung. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Moi Talks. We have an amazing show today. I hope everyone is doing well, for those of you who are listening and for those who will watch us on the replay. Again, we have an amazing show. I have an amazing guest, um, Arlene Wallace. She is a educator, a community advocate, and she is a mother. Arlene will be sharing with us about her health journey uh, in 2008, 2017, something like that. She, um, She had a health scare. And she's here to talk about um, just how we can be more intentional in terms of our parenting and taking care of ourselves. So Arlene, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. I mean, we've been friends for a while. And, um, you know, this is the second episode of the second season of Moy Talks. And we spoke, we've been speaking for quite some time just in terms of having you on the show to share Mm -hmm. your journey, because it certainly is an important conversation for us to have. So thank you so much for being here. Thank um, you. Yes. Um, now tell me, tell me, Arlene, I mean, for the, for the audience members who don't know who you are, I know who you are. <laughs> for the audience members who don't know you, uh, who you are, tell us, um, who, who are you? I mean, you are a community advocate. You are an educator. Um, you're off work now mm-hmm. and you're also a mother. Maybe you can just give us a little bit about um, your journey and, and what you do. Um, and why you want to share with us today. Absolutely. Thank you, Moi, my sister. Um, Like you said, we have known each other for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So you know the journey that I've been on from this originated, Mm -hmm. this condition. Now, as for me and my history, you know, God does things in mysterious ways. That's undeniable. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I recognize and truly understand through all of this is that where I've been on this journey, I would never change a thing. The reason I say that, Moy, is because it made me realize, A, who my father is, who God is. And he is so surreal. Mm -hmm. So I would never change anything moving forward. You know, that's that's really beautiful what you said, because most of everyone, everyone that has ever lived, everyone that has been born, we all face some challenge in life. Some of them are more dire than others. Um, And usually people have to see a substantial change for them to come to the place of saying, listen, I would not change anything. But you're still going through your process. I am. You're still having the health issues. You're still having the doctor's visits and all those things. Yes. And you're saying that even in the midst of all of that, you wouldn't change a thing. No. Where do you, where does that come from? I mean, I, I heard what you said. You said you you know, you, you know who your heavenly father is. And that's a beautiful thing. Tell us a little bit more about that. Absolutely. Well, the reason I say that is because this whole episode of my health journey Mm -hmm. has caused me to inspire to be who God created me to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I realize that purpose is clearly why we are all here. And if you are not understanding or recognizing your purpose, well, then you've missed the mark and you've missed the mark of true joy. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. And in regards to my journey, um, I worked in the Catholic school board system for almost 13 years. Now, I really was engaged in it because I loved what I did. I worked with children that had behavioral issues And I don't term them as behavioral children. I term them as children with issues, like we all have issues. Absolutely. Okay? So that's the reason I got into the industry, because I've always had a passion for families, 
first and foremost, the children. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a mom, and in my younger years, in being a single mom, I can tell you I wasn't the best mom at all mm -hmm. because it was only um, exercising what I knew and the cycle that I grew up in. Absolutely. So with that being said, there's where my journey with Christ actually began because I had a really bad episode with my son when I was younger. And he was obviously much younger as well. He was just like a toddler, school age. Mm -hmm. And I felt so guilty with that. And I prayed on that and I prayed asking God for forgiveness. And then, you know, there was this throbbing, let's say, in my heart. Like I couldn't get it out of my head mm -hmm. to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So God had set the path for me to re-educate myself. And funny enough, I did. And the reason I say funny enough is because I'll never forget, at my graduation, my son was there and my mother. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I inspired my son. He goes, Mom, you know, now I want to go to college. Now I want to go post-secondary, mm -hmm. right? He wants to also go to university. And that was something that inspired him from such a young age. How old was he at the time? He was like uh, maybe about let's say 12, because he was in about grade six or so, right? And um, it was such a beautiful thing. That's one incident that I will never forget. So moving forward, you know, when I first began and I graduated, mm -hmm. what happened was I got a contract. I didn't get permanent status right away. Mm -hmm. So uh, 2004, is when I started working in this. And about 2008 is when I got permanent status. So I loved what I did. Mm -hmm. I met all sorts of incredible uh, colleagues. Like to date, we're still friends. Mm -hmm. The ones that really made an impact on my life. Mm -hmm. Now, moving forward, getting deeper and deeper into the system. This is why, hence, I became a community advocate. And I sort of stepped out, um, out of the system. Many times I tried to go back in, but things would always happen health-wise. Mm. And I could never go back mm -hmm. in at that point. So I said, you know what? That's fine. Because at this point, I realized that I could do more in community because there was less, restri less restrictions. Mm -hmm. So, so let me, okay, so I, I don't mean to interrupt, but no, that's let, me, fine. let me go into, because uh, you will be joining us again next week right. <laughs> um, or for the next episode. So, but I want to get a little bit more just in terms of, you know, what parenting was like for you at a young age. I know you said that you were, you were, were you a single mother then? I was. You were a single mother then. Um, and you said that you weren't the best, the, per, the well, there isn't any perfect parent Right. out there, right? You can be um, close to, yeah, but, yeah. Close to, but not perfect. <laughs> right. So um, you said what you taught your son or what you exhibited and, you know, what you did as a mother was basically what you were taught, what was passed down to you. Right. Um, now, can you just share a little bit about your experiences as a mother? Um, I know you talked about the graduation, which is really amazing, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, oftentimes, uh, we make it the excuse that we're not able to achieve a degree or mm -hmm, an education mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. we have children. The children That's holds, right. us, holds us back. Now, in your case, you were able to, at the age of 12, when your son was at the age of 12, you were mm -hmm. able to go back to school, complete your degree, um, and then get full-time status within the school board. So that's, that, right. that's amazing. I think that's amazing, and you should be commended for that. Now, in terms of your experience as um, a single mother, what was that like? Because as you know, you're on Moy Talks, and with mm -hmm. Moy Talks, we're talking about life beyond Absolutely. The we're not Absolutely. skipping over anything. We're not skimming. We are talk <laughs> we're going below the surface because ultimately what we want to do, Arlene, is we want individuals to who watch this to be fully inspired. Absolutely. To understand that, listen, if someone else can face those challenges and make it out, yes. I too can face those challenges and make it out. So that's what we want to do. So share a little bit more about your journey in terms of what was it like being a young mother? Yes. Absolutely. Well, 
growing uh, sorry, I grew up with my mom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the cycle needs to be broken because of a lot of us don't recognize that there's cultural trauma. Mm. Okay? So growing up with my mom, my mom was uh, obviously married to my dad. Mm -hmm. Now, that was, to be honest, that was something that most times it was a turbulent relationship mm -hmm. because she was younger than he was. Mm -hmm. And he had come from a different environment. My mom came from modest environments, right, in an, a modest environment growing up. But my dad, at that time, he passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, over 20 years ago, but he came from a different environment where it was more privileged. Mm. So the two really um, clashed at times, well, most times. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I'm going to be open, like you said, because these are things that we really need to recognize and go to the root to uproot it and get rid of certain things breaking the cycle. Absolutely. So with that being said, like I said, my dad came from a more privileged um, environment because he was into politics. He knew a lot of, in Jamaica. So however, my mother uh, migrated to Canada at first. Mm -hmm. She brought me and then she brought my dad. Mm -hmm. So like I said, he, was, he had that in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But when he came here, he had to start all over again. Mm. There's a huge difference for sure. Yes. So that took a toll on him. Mm -hmm. It really did. And I think instead of really aiming to be where he once was or more, he settled. And so he took on alcohol mm -hmm. and became an alcoholic. Every day he would come home, he would have to have a few drinks before going to bed. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, at times, that relation, I watched and I thought to myself, my mother is so strong. She is such a strong woman with what she put up with. Mm. And she taught me so many things that she didn't realize she taught me growing mm. up. And she always taught me never to settle either. Mm. So those are significant boulders in my life that I will always Mm -hmm. Build on, Absolutely. you know, and how did how did that how did that impact your parents? So yes, yeah, so with that being said, and I really wasn't aware because to be honest, I grew up very angry mm. because of what I saw growing up, yeah. and the the responses that were given and how they were given. So that is what um, I grew up in. Mm -hmm. That is what I took on. So with that being said, um, I treated my son the same way. I was quick to anger, mm -hmm. you know, very short-tempered. Mm -hmm. And the language was abusive, mm -hmm. and it was harsh at times, physically. Mm -hmm. So when I decided through Christ Almighty, mm -hmm. it was like it just hit me because, I, like I said, there was an incident where I felt so guilty because of that anger, I could have severely hurt him. Mm -hmm. And I prayed on it. And that's the one thing I'm so grateful for, for my grandparents mm -hmm. and my mother. Mm -hmm. Because if it wasn't for their prayers mm -hmm. keeping me, I don't know where I would be today. Mm -hmm. So um, once I went back to school and I re-educated myself, um, because God made the way for me to go mm -hmm. back to school, where I didn't even have to take OSAP. I took OSAP the first two years, I believe, but then I was able to pay it off. And I actually got a grant mm -hmm. from this lady, I'll never forget it. And it was just wiped away, like I didn't have to pay it back. Mm -hmm. Some funds, not a grant. But yes. yeah. anyway, so once I went back and I re-educated myself, I remember in our psychology course, I sat there and I just questioned myself. And it really made me observe the type of parent and how dangerous it was that I was. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that I wasn't just hurting myself, mm -hmm. but first and foremost, I was hurting him and inhibit inhibiting him mm -hmm. from his full potential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you know, over time, it wasn't easy. Don't get me wrong. We had to work on our relationship, mm -hmm. my son and I. Yeah. Because at one point, he didn't trust me because he didn't know when I was going to break out in a temper, mm -hmm. right? So over time, he had to develop that trust in me because I said, you know what? I definitely asked him for his forgiveness. Yes. Going back and I said, Noah, is there anything else that you remember that I have done to you that you still remember? And it still hurts you because when you think mm -hmm. about it, it hurts you, it makes you uncomfortable. Absolutely. And he said, yes. And then we spoke about that. And I said, I'm so sorry, Noah. I said, is there anything else? And what he said to me was, no, mom, there isn't anything else. You said sorry, but you didn't ask me for my forgiveness. Mm. And that is what changed my whole world, where communication putting yourself aside and just stop and listening. Mm -hmm. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, that totally changed our relationship for the better. Mm -hmm. And when I became more educated and became more aware of who Arlene Wallace was, mm -hmm. I was then able to become that better mom, mm -hmm. first and foremost, because I made a declaration to him, but foremost to God, that once I get in to the school system, mm -hmm. I will not be hypocritical. Mm -hmm. I will treat my son first and foremost how I will treat my, my students. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. I first had to, in order to be an effective educator, I first had to be an effective parent and educator at home. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that's um. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes. Um. It's it's wow. It's um. This is this is what it is. The journey is is, it's quite something, you know. And mm -hmm. as as you said, you know, as we're growing up as young parents, you really don't know because parenting doesn't come with a manual. No. no and oftentimes, no. especially as a young person having a child, mm -hmm. you know, you're not aware of the implications. You're not aware of the, the, the grave impact that your behavior, your choices, the decisions that you make, Absolutely. how you rear your children, how it really, really affects them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you are going through your own internal struggles, right? And oftentimes that's where it comes from. It's the Absolutely. generational cycle that Absolutely. continues. Um, and you're, you're, you're just trying to figure yourself out. Mm -hmm. And that in turn has impacted him. But I'm glad that you came to the place where you're able to communicate, you mm -hmm. know, have that communication with him and then come to that place of self-awareness. Absolutely. You know, where you started to identify, um, you know, the behaviors that would mm -hmm. have that negative impact on him. Um, and then wanting to, and, and really working, being more intentional about Absolutely. your parenting. Absolutely. And, um, it's just an amazing journey, and I do commend you. Thank I commend you. you for coming on and sharing that. And as I said, we're truly believing that any person who is listening mm -hmm. um, to this broadcast that, you know, listen, we all go through things. Absolutely. You know? Oh, um, yes. If you've been born, if you've ever been born and you've, you're walking this earth, there are things that you have gone through or will go through, um, might, not as, might, might not be as extreme, but it will cause you to act and behave Absolutely. in a certain way that might have an adverse effect on the people that you are, your loved ones, mm -hmm. ultimately. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, um, so your, your own errors, your own mistakes, your negative experiences is what really fuels you yes. to be um, not just an advocate for children, but also to, to educate other parents yes. in terms Absolutely. of intentional parenting. Absolutely. Now, do you want to share a little bit about that, just the intentional parenting? You know? Yes. Like I said, in order to be an effective parent, because we have to all remember, uh, I, if there's anything I could leave or impress upon the audience is that our children are gifts. We cannot take them for granted. Mm. You, you have to remember 
that in each individual, there is a destiny and there is a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are now here on this three-dimensional earth. Mm -hmm. And our children are the same way. They're given to us. We are their caregivers. Mm -hmm. So if we don't take good care, we are going to be accountable mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to take good care of them, we have to be self-aware of mm -hmm. who we are. Absolutely. We have to be whole. With that being said, our bodies talk to us because that's how God created it. Mm -hmm. And we have, to, I know it's very challenging and difficult in this uh, Western atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that everything is just temporary. Okay, so if you don't stop and pull back and do some reflection, self-reflection, in order for you to take accountability, you are going to cause more harm mm -hmm. than good. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happening in our streets with the youth today. Mm -hmm. Many people may disagree that it's not always the home, but most importantly, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Because even if they get into certain situations, if the home is solid, yes. they will always come back to that. Okay. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, Scripture doesn't lie. Train up a child in the way that they should go so that they will not depart. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? So, and also, you have to remember that even though you're going through struggles, trials, tribulations, at the end of the day, if you fix yourself on God, the Almighty, mm -hmm. the Bible says many are the, are the afflictions of the righteous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, boy, you know where I've been. Mm -hmm. Even at times when I question God, boy, were you not there to say, no, focus on God. Mm -hmm. You spun me right back. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, that was my strength. And as you know, I have now come out of it. And we'll get further into that, mm -hmm. that journey. Absolutely. No, thank you so much. And mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, you know, even just speaking for myself, that's where the strength comes from. The Absolutely. Comes from God. And, um, you know, it's just amazing to know that as we're existing in this world and as we're having our experiences, um, you know, and going through just the trials that we go through that at the end of the day, we're not alone. No. And oftentimes we do feel alone, but we're not. But we're not. Know? Um, you know, so thank you so much for sharing that. Now, if you can just um, maybe just go a little bit more just in terms of, because uh, now you're an advocate and mm -hmm. you're, you do your best to educate parents in terms of what intentional parenting looks like. And we, we, we also see the neglect of self. Absolutely. So what happens, I mean, and, and I think, because you are coming back next week, I think maybe we can get into a little bit more about the health issues that you're, okay. you have been faced, facing um, and just how you're dealing with that. And we'll be talking about some mental illness Absolutely. episodes and stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. Um, but what is your biggest, um, you know, like what is your biggest um, thing right now? What, what, what is your biggest focus right now? Yes, well, my biggest focus right now is just really reaching out to community, especially our community, Moy, because our community stems from, like I said before, a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. cultural trauma mm -hmm. that is not in any other culture. Okay. Such for the as? most part. Such as the fact that, you know, my mother always says when they were growing up, they grew up in such a modest environment, such a modest environment mm -hmm. that they didn't even know they were poor. Mm, okay. But, and they put up with a lot because growing up back home, she would say, you know, the father was like the, 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 militant man in the home, mm -hmm. right? Based on cultural things where 
one of their thing is a child is supposed to be seen and not heard. Mm, okay. So our voices mm -hmm. were silenced, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And therefore, we had learned to gravitate to that silent voice and not being able to really speak what we wanted to mm -hmm. or express ourselves. Okay, I see. Right? Yeah. Because that was something that was innate in us, that was built in us mm -hmm. from our culture. Mm -hmm. Right? I understand, yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. There are some cultural traumas as well. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, that we face. And um, it's good when you're able to recognize it and want to, you know, redress that and, and, and really, um, you know, take the necessary steps mm -hmm. to, to raise your children or your child in a, in a much different way. Now, we know that he has come to the point where, so has he forgiven you? Because I know you asked for his forgiveness. He says, well, mom, you asked for my forgiveness, but you didn't. No, you, no, you, yes. said, you said that you were sorry, but you didn't ask for forgiveness. Yes, yes. Has he come to that place of, of forgiving you? Absolutely. Yes, 100. Because um, in that moment when I asked him, going back, I said, um, oh my gosh, Noah, you're so right. I'm so sorry. Can you please forgive me? And when he said yes, it was just like a burden that was just so lifted. And it was like the atmosphere was so completely different. Mm -hmm. It was at peace. So it was peace for you, but how about for him? Did you, re did you recognize any um, obvious um, behaviors or change in his behavior that caused you to, to think, okay, well, he's really forgiven me? You know, was well, there... yeah, because when I'm, what I was going through or when, what I'm going through with my issues right now, um, health-wise, before certain things happened, um, he was just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He was my main support, mm -hmm. you know, even uh, because at times I always said I never wanted him to see me cry. Mm -hmm. But when I was in such pain certain times, I just could not not cry because I was in such pain. Mm -hmm. And he would just come rushing to my side and he would just say, Mom, don't worry everything will be okay. You'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. And it may be obvious to most of us, but why didn't he, why didn't you want, it, want him to see you cry? Again, because it was a cultural thing, mm -hmm. right? Because growing up, even my mother, you would never see, I've never seen my mother cry to this day. Really? Really. How old is your mother? 80. 80 years old and you've never seen I've her. I've never seen her. Oh, actually, just at my dad's funeral mm -hmm. and my grandmother's. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather's, actually, but that was it. <laughs> so she cries at funerals. <laughs> That's incredible. Exactly. Anyway. Those are the only three times I've seen her cry. Now, I have to ask you a question because we know that you've had your adverse ch early childhood, um, early childhood uh, trauma, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and we know for some, uh, to some degree you've exhibited behaviors and passed that on to your son. Well, we know that it was passed on to you and it has impacted your son. Um, yes. But your son has come to a place of forgiving you. Yes. And now, have you forgiven your father? I have. Mm -hmm. And what I had done, because it's funny you say that, because that was one of our exercises in psychology at school. Mm. I actually sat down and I wrote a letter. Mm. And um, there's two things I did to make sure that I, was, um, that I had forgiven him. And it's funny you say that because one of the things was writing a letter and then burning it in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Then pulling up a chair and pretend that he was there and talking to him. Mm -hmm. Now, how I know that that forgiveness is there is because prior to doing that, even shortly after doing that, every time I would think about certain incidents, because I was actually abused by him as well. Mm -hmm. Physically abused. Yes, and that's why I was so angry mm -hmm. growing up. I would, I could tell you some episodes that this is why I say that if I, if it were not for God, I probably would have been dead mm -hmm. or in prison right mm -hmm. now because at the drop, and I didn't care who, mm -hmm. man or woman, I just wouldn't touch the children. Mm -hmm. um, so how I know that I was past that with him, the anger and the, the, um, 
Yeah, the unforgiveness mm -hmm. was because in the initial stages when I did those exercises, I didn't feel that it really took root, but over time, mm -hmm. it did. Absolutely. And that's how I knew. Mm. Yeah. Yes. It didn't bother me anymore. Okay. My heart was light. Mm -hmm. And then I had this dream, which actually confirmed it. Now that you mentioned it, I dreamt that my father had already passed away. Mm -hmm. And in the dream, I was in this change room. And the, in the atmosphere was just white. Nothing around, just this change room. And I'm changing. And I look and I see my father standing at the door. Mm -hmm. So that's an indication that my thoughts, the anger that I had, is no more. It's turned around. Mm -hmm. It's okay. no longer there. And he was there watching me in, you know, forgiveness, mm -hmm. like, I'm happy she's okay now, sort of a thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, and, and how are things now with you and your son? Oh, so good. I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful. I thank God for him every day. And how about your mother? I mean, because she would have gone through a fair bit of trauma herself, right? Yeah, my mom is good. But like I said, my mother has always been so strong. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't even understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, she would always tell me mm -hmm. when I would want to cry when we were going through our thing, Noah and I, mm -hmm. right? Most recently, especially with the health scare, mm -hmm. she would always say, Arlene, don't cry, just pray. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But do you, think, do you think that might be also a cultural thing? Because Absolutely. I mean, and that might ultimately have a damaging effect. On I, I agree. Yes. Because I do see the effects. Yes. You're so right. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of things that are still, she's holding on to mm -hmm. because she's never been able to express, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Or to really say how she feels or just to cry. It's mm -hmm. okay to cry, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. It is okay to cry. Wow. Um, you've said a whole lot. And I thank you so much for being so vulnerable, for sharing your journey, your story. Um, it, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's quite inspiring. And I think anything that we go through in life, it's never just for ourselves. Never. Right? It's always, and I always, I always say this, and I'm sound, trying, starting to sound like a broken record, <laughs> that, you know, the negative things that happen to us, it's not for our ruin. God doesn't intend intends for it to ruin us. No. It's really to strengthen us. Absolutely. To build us, us, to, to build us up, to empower us so that we can actually you know, um, that we can serve other people who may very well be going through similar oh, struggles. clearly. And we see how that's taking place in your life. Clearly. We see how, you know, the decisions that you made in terms mm -hmm. of becoming an educator, dealing mm -hmm. with behavioral children, becoming a community advocate, and then also now, you know, teaching and educating parents mm -hmm. on how to be more intentional about how they do parenting. I yes. think it's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I'm so glad that you've come this far and you have forgiven your father. Your son mm -hmm. has forgiven you. You have a healthy mother and son relationship right now. And you will be back for Thank the next you. episode <laughs> um, to share a little bit more about your health scare. Clearly. Um, we know that it was quite dire. There was yes. a couple of times that I had come to visit yes. with you. Yes, um, And we'll talk about that some yes. more. You know, we'll definitely talk about that some more just in terms of taking care of ourselves. Yes. And, um, and what it looks like when, um, you know, you're experiencing symptoms and what it means yes. to, yes. you know, to truly take... To vocalize it yes. and take action. Take yes. action, absolutely. So... This is it, Arlene. This is the end of our second episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me. It is an honor to hear your story. There's a lot that I've learned today that I didn't know before. Um, and even more so, my heart is for you and I'm here to support you. And it, I you know. know I'm here to support you. I know. <laughs> so there, there you go, everyone. Um, this is Moy Talks. This is second episode of season two with Arlene Wallace. And she will be back for our next episode. As you've heard, she's shared with us her wonderful, beautiful journey um, it didn't sound all beautiful, but trust me, when God is a part of your life, it really, he's able to take, you know, what looks like the most damaging thing, the most horrifying thing, egregious thing, yes. and turn it into something beautiful. And we see that she's, Arlene is still going through her process, as we all are, and she's really walking in that grace of God. 
So thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who will watch us on the replay, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, we welcome your comments, your encouragement um, as you know our audience or our guests, sorry, as, as they share. So we just thank you so much for listening to Moy Talks. This is your sister and ally, and I look forward to seeing you for our next episode where Arlene will be joining me again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, remember, life is way too short to be average. So don't shrink back. Don't shrink back, Masse. And compete with no one other than yourself. Be excellent at whatever you do. Enough love from your sister and ally, Moi Fung.